New Yorkers are different from everyone else in the country. Here, we don't get our fruit from grocery stores. Here, everyone has a fruit guy. They're everywhere, on your commute, by your apartment, on your route back from the gym, and generally, they've got the ripest and cheapest fruit in town. So we wanna know, what's it like in the day in the life of a New York City fruit vendor? Today, we're in the deep Bronx. We're about to meet up with Liton, who's a Bangladeshi fruit guy. It's like 4 a.m. We've already been up for two hours. Whenever we do these day in the life videos, we always have to wake up so early. We are uh, downstairs. Can we come up? We're gonna go upstairs. This is where Liton lives with his wife and his son. Hopefully, we're not waking him up. Good morning. Come here, sit down. Every day, Litone starts his morning in the dark at 4 a.m. He does it for these two, his wife, Sharmanetta, and his son, Muhammad. Sorry to wake you. And clearly we woke them both up. Muhammad is about to start high school here in the Bronx. Are you gonna work at the fruit stand at all? No. They're from Bangladesh, near the capital city of Dhaka, a city of 17 million people. There's no exact percentage, but many of New York City's fruit vendors come from Bangladesh. Up at 4 a.m., we're leaving at 4.30. And come back with the 8.30, sometimes 9 o'clock. When do you sleep? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no sleep. <laughs> Let's, uh, I guess we gotta go, right? Okay, yeah, sure. Bye. <laughs> then, it's a long commute into the city. Two trains get him to the west side of Manhattan. Leighton's been doing this every day for 16, 17 years. Every day, he picks up his cart from a garage on 9th Avenue. Then, he's got to roll this thing three avenues against traffic to get to his spot. This is the spot where it all goes down. 36th and 6th, right by Herald Square. It's time to set up shop. Same place every day. How long has this been your spot? Uh, almost 12. 12 years. What happens if you get here one morning and somebody else is in your spot? No, no, nobody can. Why? Uh, just uh, me long time walking. Everyone knows this is yeah, Everybody knows. And now the fruit arrives. The fruit stands around New York are just the endpoints of a major network that puts fresh fruit in your hands from all over the globe. Over 60% of New York's fresh food comes through Hunts Point in the Bronx, the largest public produce market in the world. Here, in a massive 1 million square foot market, merchants and distributors have been up all night buying and selling fresh produce. How, what time did you get up today? Last night, 8 o'clock at night. That's how all New York restaurants, grocery stores, and fruit stands like this one get their fresh fruit. Now, Litone stocks his cart and gets ready for the morning rush. Do you eat the fruit every day? No? Never. Every day smell, I think a smell is there. You're not supposed to get high on your own supply. Everybody knows that. <laughs> it's now 6.30 in the morning. People are starting to arrive. Uh, the bananas are going fast. What makes this fruit so good and so cheap? Most supermarkets are buying fruit that needs to last on shelves. But this fruit is perfectly ripe today. So distributors are able to sell this to vendors at a low price and you get fruit that's cheap, fresh, and perfectly ready to eat. These bananas are coming straight in the box from Colombia. The plums are from Chile. The pears are from Argentina. The whole world has just descended upon this cart into your hands, right here in the middle of the city. This has been Litone's job basically since he came from Bangladesh in 2001. Bangladesh is a poor country. Not a uh, good job. So when he was 27, Litone left his five sisters and his brother and came to the U.S. My friend lived here. Me going this room and live together. Uh, five people live here, this home. Three people is a food vendor. He tell me, uh, you take a license, food vending license, and the job is good. It's hard work, but he can take care of his wife and son on his own terms. Me boss, me work on me every day. Yeah. That's why I like freedom. Yeah. Even if that means standing out in the sun all day. It's about 2, 2.30 2 in the afternoon. It is hot. Very hot. Very slow view. Slow day? Very slow. And do you think why or what can I do about it? or? Nothing, nothing to do. 
So all you can do is worry. Yeah. So what happens if you have to go to the bathroom? Uh, the God watch. God watches if, yeah. if you leave. It's six o'clock, but it is starting to rain on us a little bit. So it's time to start packing up, get the cart back to the garage on 9th Avenue and call it a day. Holy ton, was today a good day? Uh, nah. Not a good day? Nah. No people. In this city, no people. Hot. So unfortunately today was not a great day for Litan. And you know, I wish there was more business, but that's kind of just how life is, you know? Some days you get a ton of business, and some days you don't. So, you know, he did his best. He'll go home. He'll be here tomorrow. Are you tired right now? Right now it's tired. The life of a fruit cart vendor is tough. Some people don't understand why he does it. But for Litan, it's how he supports the people he loves. And that is enough. I take care of my wife, son, is everything finished. Right. Somehow, in the middle of the concrete jungle, New Yorkers are getting some of the best fruit in the country. It might only be 30 cents a banana on your commute, but it took a whole lot of work to get it in your hands. This is a day in the life of your reliable New York City fruit cart vendor. I'm Litan. This is my fruit cart, Ramia! Yeah! Ah, uh, yes, this is Mr. Banana Head. I'm looking for the best fruit in New York City. Ah, sir, well, you found it right here on 36th and 6th Street in Harold Square. Wow, it was right in my hands the whole time. 